what's up guys welcome back to my channel today i bring you yet another posing showcase today featuring hot toys mms 518 aquaman from his solo film which is actually one of my favorite superhero films this time we're featuring 12 total poses including this one here which reminds me of the moment when he gets the trident and comes out to meet mera and his mother for those that know me know I'm a big Jason Momoa fan, so getting this figure into the collection to represent him and the film was an absolute must for me. The world, story and adventure that James Wan and his team created for this film I think was amazing and it's just one of those movies I love, all the corny bits included, and there is a few, but I don't care. I love it and I can't wait to see where the story goes next. I will say it's an absolute shame that we didn't get more figures from this film. I think we should have gotten a Mera, a Black Manta, and an Ocean Master at the very least. So Hot Toys, please on the next one, make up for it and give us these figures. This figure hasn't seen much love in the community, which is disappointing for me because whilst it has its issues, I still think it's a great representation of Aquaman and it's still the only representation of the classic green and gold suit in 1-6 scale form. So today, I'm going to honour the King of the Sea and show you guys, even with the limitations, what he can do and how awesome he can look on the shelf and in your display. Now for those that don't know, this base here doesn't come with the figure. This is from my one quarter scale premium format Aquaman statue from Sideshow. For my posing showcases, I like to get creative and bring in different elements to see what we can come up with, and today you'll see me bring in a few different elements to add to the experience. As always, each scene goes around on the turntable for two minutes in line with the song I've chosen to give you all the angles. I'll also give you some info on each pose and the setup at the start of each one, and Bob's your uncle. But now, with that, you know what we do. Pose number two, we have Aquaman leaping out of the water, just like he did at the end of the film, which I thought was a great way to end the movie, and I think this is not only an iconic way, but a really nice, simple, safe way to display him on the shelf. For this pose, I'm using the water base that he comes with, and his trident. Other than the extra hands, these are the only accessories he comes with, unfortunately. I've also made a change here in the form of a crotch piece instead of a waist grabber. He comes with a waist grabber, but I've opted to use a spare crotch piece I have instead as I don't like using waist grabbers if I don't have to. I think they look unsightly and if I can get him to balance without it, I will. I think it creates more of an illusion from certain angles, like he's actually leaping out of the water on his own, which I like. On the shelf, if you angle everything just right, you can barely see anything holding him up, which adds to the viewing experience. And for me, that's how I prefer to display my figures if possible. I'd love to know if you care about seeing flight stands or waist grabbers in your display, or do you prefer to have them looking as clean as possible like I do? Let me know in the comments down below. Pose number three, we have Aquaman in a swimming pose. I imagine with this one, he's underwater, swimming up to the edge of a reef, right before a drop off, and he's looking down, examining what lurks below. And I've tried to achieve that with the camera angle here. For this pose, I'm using the base that comes with the Optimus Prime hot toy and using a clear rod with a crotch piece again to limit the appearance of assistance holding him up. I've also taken the two magnetic seaweed pieces that attach to the premium format statue and I've placed them at the bottom of this base to try and seal the illusion of him being underwater. Also by using these from certain angles, the seaweed blocks the view of the rod holding him up, which I really like. Now this figure is quite restrictive in the upper body. 
However, his lower body and torso twist articulate really well, so achieving swimming-like poses is quite doable when you get the angle of movement right, and I think this pose sells that pretty well. This is something I'd leave him in on the shelf, is set up at the right angle to hide the stand. I think it would be best viewed on a higher shelf if you have a detoff or any type of display like that. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Pose number four, we have Aquaman in another swimming pose, this time holding the trident with both hands. I'm also trying to convey the look of him having swam up, heading to the right, holding the trident across his body as he glides forward. The trident is a great tool to give him more looks and work with his limitations with his upper body for posing. You just have to get creative with how he's holding it and moving with it. Compared to the last pose where I was conveying having him swim up to a stop to look over a ledge, this time by changing his direction and focus, it tells a different story. It's subtle, but if you had both poses next to each other, you'd be able to see they are actually quite different looks. Again, I'm using the same base and setup as the last pose, using the seaweed, the rocks and the blue lighting to create an underwater effect that I think sells the swimming poses more, and if you're a person like me who likes to create more of a diorama with your display, I suggest looking at adding more underwater elements to your display to sell the look of him underwater. If you want to try poses definitely like this. When I finally set up my display, I'll be sourcing accessories that come with aquariums or things like that to create a little underwater world for him and hopefully future Aquaman figures from the next upcoming movie to go alongside him. Pose number five, Aquaman, about to launch the trident at an enemy. I'm telling you, this is not a weapon I'd like thrown in my direction, that's for sure. As you can see, we get a little more dynamic here with this pose, and from certain angles, I think he looks really dynamic. Almost like he's running across the top of the water, or he's just leapt out of the water. Which one do you think is more correct? This was actually the first pose I came up with for this video. Originally, I had him aiming down like he was about to throw the trident downward into the water, but after playing around with the angles, I settled on this one as I like how it looks from side on more. It's more pleasing to the eye, I think. And you know, that brings up a point I want to share with you. When it comes to a pose you come up with, try manipulating the angle from which you view it, because that can change everything. I actually wanted to use both poses for this video back to back to show the difference, but decided against it in the end as it's the exact same pose, just a different angle. I will put the other pose up on my Instagram though with the reel so you can still see it. I just like the angle of this one a little bit better. This is one of my favorite out of all the poses I've done and something I'd definitely leave him in on the shelf for a while as it's more dynamic than I originally thought possible for this guy before starting this showcase. What do you guys think?
pose number six. Aquaman, lining up a target, getting ready to launch the trident like he's about to spear someone. This pose here is inspired by the Iron Studio statue of Aquaman that I came across whilst researching poses to try with this guy. And I'm actually pretty happy with how close I got to the look of it. I did decide to change up the angle a bit and have him more straight up instead of leaning back as I did want to make it my own as well. For those that have this figure, you'll know that the mobility of his shoulders is really limited. However, his elbows and wrists move really well. So when achieving a pose like this, it's all about angling him and using what you can to create range. Having the trident allows and helps you to come up with the looks though, because you can use it to inspire how you want him holding it. If he didn't have the trident to interact with, I feel he'd feel even more limited than he already is. Again, I'm using the original base that he comes with as I feel that goes really well for a look like this. I manipulated the flight pole and bent it up under his belt there as well to add to the concealment of it. So from certain angles, you can hardly see it again, which again creates the illusion of him being suspended in time and unsupported. Let me know if you think this is a cool display or if you consider this look for your Aquaman figure. I quite like it. Pose number seven, Aquaman, battling a foe, having knocked him down and telling him to yield. This pose here is inspired by the end of the movie and his battle with Ocean Master, where he defeats him and holds the trident to his throat and tells him to yield. One of my favorite moments and I think an iconic pose he achieves from the movie. I thought it was so epic that I had to try and recreate it with him here. Now, as I don't have a DC villain in my collection yet, I decided to bring back Ronan for the purpose of the scene and to give Arthur someone to interact with. I think his color palette works nicely with Aquaman here too. I've also thrown in the weapon that comes with the Infinity War cap to give to Ronan as it's similar to the Trident and I imagine they have been both fighting with these similar weapons as he did with Ocean Master in the film. For the poses, Whilst I'm happy with my pose for Aquaman, I couldn't get him accurately to match the look from the film due to the limitations of his upper torso and shoulders. The suit is thick and always wants to bounce back, so I had to get creative and play with the angles to change his right hand position here. In the movie, his right arm is up much higher, tilting up and back with the palm facing down. However, in the end, I'm happy with how close I got for this scene and it works in my opinion. For Ronan, He's a dream to pose, so it was easy to get him in this position to create the moment. I think just by having him there, it elevates Aquaman's pose and tells a story. Much more so than if he wasn't there and Aquaman was just on his own. Pose number eight, Ronan didn't yield and the fight continues. We have Aquaman spearing him and lifting him up into the air with his trident. This pose was actually inspired by Zack Snyder's Justice League where he spears Stefan Wolf through the back and lifts him up. I wanted to try a version of that, but make it different. And when I originally tried it, I just used a regular stand and flight pole. But after filming it, I just didn't like the look of the flight pole and the stand there. So I decided to have another go using the statue base and a clear rod to add more elements and lift him up just a little bit higher. 
Now as the statue base isn't made to hold a flight pole, what I've done is put some blue tack in the magnet hold at the top of the base and stuck the rod into it to hold him up. I know, real professional, right? I did have to use a waist grabber as well for this one, but as Ronin's suit is black, it's not as noticeable when viewed from Aquaman's perspective. I think this pose is really best viewed from some angles. It's not something I'd display him in on the shelf. This one's more for fun and for photography. I just wanted to see if I could pull it off. Aquaman was pretty easy to get into this position and I'm really impressed with his lower body articulation to be able to be kneeling like this really well. Oh yeah, and also, don't F with Aquaman or he's gonna shish kebab ya. Pose number 9. Playing around with another fighting scene here, we have Aquaman spearing Ronan and thrusting him down as he splashes into the water. This pose actually came about randomly as I hopped on a Zoom meetup with the Jetta Patrol crew one day for a pose session and as I was in the midst of filming this video, I just decided to go with these guys as I already had them out on the desk. The theme was a fight which was fun so I ended up coming up with this and decided to throw it into the showcase as well. Shout out to all you guys that were there on the meetup too, it was awesome. I'm actually really happy with this one. I'm not using any grabbers or flight poles, but using extra elements to create a scene and a moment. One thing I love about bringing in other elements and characters for posing is it opens up way more options for you. Just by getting the characters to interact, it can change how a pose looks. A pose that might not look so good if the figure's on its own can look way better when you have it playing off something else. And I think that's evident for Aquaman's pose here. Without Ronan and the scene setup, I don't think I would have displayed him like this at all. What do you guys think of this one? Let me know in the comments down below. But I think this one actually came out pretty well. Pose number 10, Aquaman, standing strong, raising his trident high. For me, this is one of my favorite poses for him. It reminds me of the moment from the final battle of the film where he's riding the Karathan at the end and he raises the trident high and takes command of all the sea. This is a pose I would definitely leave him in on the shelf long term. And if I didn't need this base for my statue, I would use this to have him on in a heartbeat. I think it's simple and elegant and a nice way to display the figure that encapsulates the film and his journey to becoming not just the king, but the hero his people need. In regards to the pose itself, I have a confession. Whilst trying to achieve this look, I actually popped his arm out of the socket by accident. Don't worry though, it pops back in fine and there are no issues as the thickness of the suit holds it all in place. Shout out to my brother Anthony from the figure posing channel who also highlighted the shoulder popping issue in his Aquaman showcase and that put me at ease. Now, what I realized after I finished panicking that I damaged the figure is that by having his arm out of the socket, I was able to have it sit in the position nicely here and his arm held up perfect for the look I was going for for this scene. So I filmed this and then I popped it back in. 
If I were to leave him in this look long term, I wouldn't worry about it being out of the socket again as it pops right back in, no worries. But yeah, I love this one. Pose number 11. Now, this one is purely for fun. We have Aquaman riding a creature into battle. Now for this, I wanted to recreate the scene from the film where he's riding a seahorse into battle, which I thought was so badass that I had to try to recreate it. And that led to this setup we have here before us. Now, as I don't have a giant seahorse, meet our stand-in for today, this big blue dragon creature. He does not scale well at all, but for a little bit of fun, I had to give it a go. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know. This one was actually a little bit of a challenge to make happen, as getting him to balance on this dragon while spinning on the turntable was a task, but in the end, he stayed up long enough for me to film this, and I think he looks cool and also hilarious at the same time. Maybe in the future, I'll find a more realistic looking sea creature for him to ride, and I'll redo this pose and put it up. The pose itself is pretty basic and pretty much dictated by how I tried to get him to balance and not fall off. His left hand is actually wedging in and holding onto the top of the dragon's head, which helps him stay up there. And then we have the left foot balancing in between the opening on the tail here. It's definitely not one I'd leave him in on the shelf with this dragon, but if I had more of a look realistic looking seahorse though, or a shark, I would definitely consider it. I think it would look great, and in a full on underwater diorama, it would look awesome. Maybe for my final display, I might try something like that. Anyway, one more to go after this. Let's go. Pose number 12, the final pose. The King of Atlantis sitting on his throne. This one is my absolute favorite of the bunch and one that I need to find a way to display him in on the shelf. If I didn't love my statue so much, man, I would definitely use this base and this pose forever. I love it. A big shout out to Anthony from the figure posing channel again, mate, for the sitting idea. He had him sitting in a chair, looking awesome in his posing showcase. If you haven't yet, go check out his channel and subscribe for awesome posing content. Now, as I don't have any chairs in my collection though, I opted to use this base, which I think is perfect for this pose. It's a simple thing just sitting there, but I love the whole look of it so much so that I thought there's no better way to close out the showcase than to have him sitting atop his throne in command of the seven seas. Okay, so now we've reached the end for today. Thank you all for tuning in and I hope you've enjoyed the poses I've brought you and taken away some ideas for your own displays. If you haven't already, do us a favor and hit that like button, hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel. I'm super excited to announce we have a new giveaway working in conjunction with Unreal Toys on Instagram, where we're teaming up to give away two custom capes to a lucky winner once my channel reaches two and a half K subscribers. So if you have figures with capes and you wish you could articulate them, but you can't, hit that subscribe button and you could win yourself some for your figures. While you're at it, hop on Insta and give Unreal Toys a follow so you can see all the awesome work he's doing, not just on capes, but many other ventures within the 1.6 community. Terms and conditions for the giveaway this time are, the winner will need to pay for shipping as the contest is worldwide, so anyone could be a winner. This is a thank you from me to you for supporting the channel. You're all legends. Lastly, we got reviews, 
posing and story style posing showcases, live streams, including Take a Position Live that I co-host with One Six Scale Man and Anthony from the Figure Posing Channel, my show Posed Up where I interview a fellow collector or content creator, plus much, much more. Until next time, guys, live life, have fun, and keep posing. I'm out.